guests, the President of the United States, accompanied by Jennifer Klein, Ada Limon, Nicole Matthews, Kyle Richard, and Ruth Glenn. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for joining us to mark the 30th anniversary of the Violence Against Women Act. I'd like to welcome the hundreds of survivors, advocates, and allies with us here today. I'm Jennifer Klein, and I have the honor of serving as the director of the first ever White House Gender Policy Council. While there is still so much to do to end gender-based violence, today we reflect on the progress we've made over the last 30 years. When people were still whispering about domestic violence, then Senator Biden started a national conversation. He gave survivors a microphone they never had before, and he listened, and he forced others to listen. He stood up for women and girls, as he always has and always does. Alongside courageous survivors and advocates, he forced the country to face what it had ignored for far too long. The Violence Against Women Act fundamentally transformed our nation's laws and culture. President Biden, with all of you, has worked to strengthen this law ever since. And this president, Vice President, and this president, this vice president, and the entire administration are fighting every single day to end gender-based violence once and for all. Now I have the great honor of introducing the first of our incredible speakers, our nation's poet laureate, Ada Limon. It is my great honor to be with you all today to help mark this important occasion. When I was first asked to attend today's ceremony, I thought I'd read a poem I had already written. But a few days went by, and I kept coming back to the significance of this day. And as I held the power of the Violence Against Women Act in my head and in my heart, I decided I needed to compose an original poem. So here is a poem I wrote specifically for this gathering, for today, for all of you. For the sake of us. Out of the burst of air that is breath caught and breath returned, out of cloud cover, out of clover leaf and glue, out of private disasters and the spinning webs of fall's wind, what is woven, what is brilliantly designed to hold our own bright selfhood comes into focus. Out of break and bonding, out of new shoots of blossoms and the outline of fallen leaves, out of one voice calling and more voices echoing, out of who we are erased of unease, only the original tender thing, out of our own groundedness that is not unfounded, but of this earth, the planet's signal that blinks, you belong. You belong, yes, you too belong. Out of this comes our own sovereignty, a sanctity that is not ceremonial, but true. For each of us must stand in the arms of the rough world and trust it wants us here, wants to carry us safely, wants our inner wilderness the way it wants the trees once the growling self and the soft self, once the body and what's beneath, wants us all to be allowed to breathe.
please welcome Nicole Matthews. Buju and Dinaway Maganang, Nicole Matthews Jaganashimung, Mani Dubaneshi Koyendago, Migazian Do Dame, Gawa Babaganakag in Dunjaba. Greetings, my relatives. My English name is Nicole Matthews, and my Indian name means Spirit Bird Woman. I am Eagle Clan, and I'm from the White Earth Band of Ojibwe. I am a survivor of gender based violence. I am the daughter of a survivor, I am the mother of a survivor. I know firsthand how critical the Violence Against Women's Act is to survivors everywhere. As a child, I remember hiding under my blankets in my bedroom, listening to the sounds of my mom being physically assaulted by my dad. I remember walking past my dad while the police talked to him and my mom and I were told to find somewhere else to stay for the night because there were no services and there were no shelters to turn to. I remember how angry my mom was at a system that made us, the victims, leave, while the abuser got to stay in the home. I decided then that I wanted to work to create a world where women and children were safe from violence. <clears throat> Today I'm the executive director of the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. One of the very first tribal coalitions funded by the Violence Against Women's Act in 2001. I have been with the coalition since its inception and thanks to VAWA, I've seen incredible changes over the years. I worked alongside our tribal coalition relatives to dream about what safety looks like for our tribal communities. And together, we have helped make those dreams a reality. Because of this historic bill, we now have special tribal criminal jurisdiction over non-Indian offenders. This helps to keep Native women and children safe. We now have protections for our LGBTQ two-spirit relatives. We have programs for transitional housing, shelter, and to address trafficking. <clears throat> We have tribal and culturally specific sexual assault services and legal services for victims, programs for immigrants, and for our relatives in the U.S. territories, not to mention our tribal set-aside. All that and so much more. I think back to that moment with my mom all those years ago, and although she is now in the spirit world, I know we're going to be okay. There are a lot of people out there that have our back, including one of our greatest, greatest champions, President Biden. I would now like to introduce another champion who has shown how important it is to engage men in this movement, Kyle Richard. Chimigwich. Hi, everyone. My name is Kyle Richard and it's an honor to be with you this afternoon. When I was a college football player, I attended a party with my friends. We unfortunately came across a young man clearly trying to take advantage of a young woman. We did the only thing that felt right in the moment. We intervened. While trying to confront and remove the perpetrator, I was shot twice. But I'm still here. And I still graduated while finishing my college football career. As an athlete, my dream had always been to become a strength and conditioning coach. But after this experience, I became inspired to strengthen something else instead, the culture around violence prevention on college campuses. So I began speaking out. And in 2018, I was honored to receive the It's On Us Biden Courage Award where I got to speak with President Biden, who at the time was the former Vice President, through his decades of work on the Violence Against Women Act and his commitment to take on gender-based violence, President Biden set the foundation for our work around prevention and support for survivors. Now, as a professional, I'm back with It's On Us. I lead our work to engage men in the fight to end gender-based violence. And next week, our organization is celebrating our 10th anniversary.
Since President Biden launched It's On Us in 2014, we have empowered millions of college students to take action to prevent sexual assault. Seeing our student chapters at work brings me so much hope for the progress we can and must make in our college communities. So to President Biden, thank you for showing people like me that we do have a role in preventing violence, that we need to empower my generation and our future leaders to continue fighting this fight. Now, it's my honor to introduce Ruth Glenn, a trailblazer and a hero who's been fighting this fight for decades. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. I'm going to help you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. What a powerful moment this is for all of us. Today, we stand together to celebrate 30 years of progress, perseverance, and profound change. My name is Ruth Glenn, and I am the president of Survivor Justice Action. As someone who survived domestic violence before the Violence Against Women Act was passed, I know all too well the struggles that so many survivors faced in silence, in myself included. In 1992, I was shot by my abusive husband, and I had no federal protections to turn to. The resources and coordinated community responses we now rely on did not exist at that time. I often wonder how different things could have been for me and for my son had Vala been in place at that time. But like so many survivors, I have found strength by doing the work so that others would not have to experience what I did. Thanks to President Biden and VAWA, survivors today have more support, protection, and opportunities for safety and justice than ever, ever before. What we could not have known in 1994 was that this law would expand from supporting survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking to include dating violence and groundbreaking provisions on housing, legal assistance, economic justice, American Indian sovereignty, and services for the LGBTQ community. We've gone further than we could have ever imagined. President Biden's vision has set the course for a safer, more inclusive future for everyone. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the survivors and advocates who came before us and those who are with us today, including those behind me. Like many of you in the audience, the leaders you see on the staircase work day in and day out to support survivors in communities all across the nation. Their courage and dedication help push our entire movement forward. And now, to our Commander-in-Chief, the man whose unwavering support and commitment have helped transform the country's response to domestic and sexual violence. The man who authored the original Violence Against Women Act as a senator. The man who fought to strengthen the law again and again as Vice President. And the man who today, as our President, continues to, invite, to fight to ensure every survivor is heard and protected and supported. 
on behalf of the National Task Force to End Sexual and Domestic Violence and all women, girls, and survivors. Thank you, Mr. President. And now, it is my profound honor to introduce the man, the leader, who has championed this fight for over three decades. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the President of the United States, Joe Biden. My name is Joe Biden. I'm Jill Biden's husband and Ashley Biden's dad. Thank you, Ruth, Nicole, and Kyle for sharing your stories. Your courage literally inspires the nation, and we stand with you. The entire nation stands with you. You know, my daughter Ashley, the love of my life and the life of my love, she is, uh, she, and, and she, anyway, I'll go and get, anyway. <laughs> I get emotional when I talk about her. And thank you, Ada, and your beautiful poetry. It's also an honor to see so many friends, brave survivors, and devoted advocates. And thank you to the bipartisan members of Congress who worked tirelessly, and I mean tirelessly, to ensure and expand what we're doing here today. As well as a <laughs> the reason I put these glasses on, the sun's shining that way, and I want to see you all over there. <laughs> as well as the late Diane Feinstein, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, <laughs> whom we miss very much. It wasn't too long ago that we as a country didn't want to talk about violence against women as a national epidemic, let alone do something the government had to address. Society often looked away, and so many, so many places, violence against women wasn't a crime. It was referred to as a family affair. We were told addressing it would cause disintegration of the family. That's what I got accused of. Biden was disintegrating the family. Not a joke. That was a full-blown campaign. And the shelters, this one that really angered me, the shelters that we were put in a place were nothing more than indoctrination centers. Indoctrination. Few police, few police departments had special victims units. And there was no national hotline to call, none. There was a background. That was the background when I first wrote the Violence Against Women Act in 1990. My goal was to do more than change the law, to change the culture of America. I mean it provide more protection and support for survivors, and to create accountability for perpetrators. The way I looked at it, I come from, I was raised by a dad, a gentle, decent man. He taught my siblings and me that the greatest abuse of power, the greatest abuse of power was to abuse power. And the cardinal sin that a man could do was raise his hand to a woman or a child. So I believed that the only way we could change the culture was by shining a light on that culture and speaking its name. We started holding public hearings, despite senators saying it was, I was, it was too salacious for the public to see. That was one of the arguments. You may be right, Joe, it was too salacious for the public to see. They won't understand. We had to let America know what was going on. Americans are at core basic decent people, and I believe that if they could see the truth, we could begin to change things. And that's what happened. <laughs> the Violence Against Women Act broke the dam of congressional and cultural resistance, brought this hidden epidemic out of the shadows, and began to shift the legal and social burdens away from the survivors onto the perpetrators where they belonged. For example, the new law created the first ever national hotline for survivors to get help. 
It supported shelters, rape crisis centers, housing, legal assistance for women and children all across America. And the law helped train police officers and advocates and prosecutors and judges and court personnel to make our entire system, entire system, more fair and responsible to the needs of survivors. And over the last 30 years, every time we've reauthorized that law when I was a senator, when I was vice president, when I was president, we've strengthened it. We broaden the laws, domestic violence protection, <laughs> to including dating violence and to better support survivors of stalking and sexual assault. We expanded services to protect immigrants, communities of color, rural communities, tribal lands, LGBTQ survivors, and to create a new program to end the backlog of rape kits. Instead of prevention programs in every state, we secured historic funding to increase so much more. Since we passed VAWA, according to the Department of Justice, between 1993 and 2022, annual rates of domestic violence have dropped by almost 70 percent. <laughs> while rape and sexual assaults have declined by more than 55 percent. And our first ever domestic violence hotline has received over 7 million calls since 1996. It matters. It saves lives. Being able to pick up that phone and call, I remember the first time I listened in. I can hear him. I can see him. He's coming. Please, send somebody. Please, please, please. You know, there's always more to do. Let me just say the first and best decision I made when I was a nominee in 2020 was selecting Kamala Harris as vice president. Not a political statement, it's a factual statement. A former district attorney, attorney general, U.S. senator who prosecuted and stood up to sexual violence offenders her entire career. You can't say that about my predecessor. <laughs> Kamala and I have also taken steps beyond this law to address violence against women. We know that during the pandemic, and you know it as well, domestic violence increased. That's why, through our American Rescue Plan, I directed $1 billion in supplemental funding to ensure survivors trapped in bad situations could get the court, including safe housing. We also passed the most significant gun safety law in 30 years that narrowed, <laughs> that narrowed the so-called boyfriend loophole to include dating partners convicted of abuse who say they could not own a firearm. What a fight that was, but we won it. I signed a bipartisan bill, then it was known as forced arbitration. Remember that? We hire you if, in fact, you, anything happens, you, where you uh, cast to go to arbitration, not you can't go to court. Prevented survivors of abuse and harassment in the workplace from getting their day in court. We ended that. Yeah. It's amazing the people who oppose us doing that. It just stunned me. And to keep college students safe, we strengthened the protection under Title IX that my predecessor then weakened. And building on the work we started when I was Vice President when I launched the It's On Us program that Kyle mentioned earlier, we're increasing funding, increasing funding to prevent campus assault, sexual assault. It's important. And we've created reforms that fundamentally shift how the military investigates and prosecutes sexual assault and domestic violence, including, <laughs> including independent prosecutors who now report outside the military officer command structure. And I want to thank Chris, Senator Kristen Gillibrand and Congressman Jackie Spears. Jackie here, I know Kristen couldn't be here. But Jackie, if you're here, stand up because you deserve sp special recognition. I don't see you, but you may be out there. Jackie's leadership in this has made a big difference. For the first time in nearly a decade, the rates of sexual assault and harassment within the active duty military forces are down, finally. Down. <laughs> Kamala and I also continue to stand with women and girls worldwide who are facing violence 
and demand basic human rights. I also signed the historic presidential memorandum to punish individuals around the globe who use rape and sexual violence as a weapon of war and terror. And we continue to condemn Russia for its widespread violent sexual assaults in Ukraine. Just as we condemn the terrorist group Hamas and its appalling, despicable acts of rape, mutilation, sexual violence in Israel on October 7th and against hostages in captivity. <laughs> Silence and denial can hide much, but it can erase nothing, nothing. Some injuries are so heinous, so horrific, so grievous, they can't be buried, no matter how hard people try. And today, I'm proud to announce the new significant actions. A record of nearly $700 million in grants this year alone to more than 40 VA VAWA-funded programs in states, tribal communities across the country, $700 million. <laughs> We're also issuing new policies to expand housing protections for survivors, give law enforcement more tools to remove guns from domestic abusers, and we are, we are tackling the next frontier of gender-based violence and abuse, deep fake images and videos generated by artificial intelligence. Back in 2022, we established civil protections for those who, whose, whose intimate images are shared without their consent. It's now a crime. Today, in response to my call to action, we received new commitments from leading technology companies to combat the creation of exploitive deep fake images and to stop distributing and making money off this kind of sexual abuse, which they're doing now. <laughs> Folks, but the fact is, we know our work never stops. To any survivor who's struggling, I want you to know you're not alone. Doug and I, Kamala and Doug, our entire administration, the entire community have your back. For example, Kamala and I will continue to defend reproductive freedom in America. My predecessor is proud that he put justice in the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. As a result, Republicans are criminalizing doctors, denying IVF treatment, turning women away from emergency rooms, forcing survivors of rape and incest to leave their states to get care. It is outrageous. Yeah. In its decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court majority wrote, and I quote, women are not without electoral or political power, end of quote. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Talk about out of touch. Clearly, the Supreme Court and my predecessors have no clue about the power of women in America. Let me close with this. The Violence Against Women Act is my proudest legislative accomplishment in all the years I've served as senator, vice president, and president. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And And I'm so proud, so grateful for the heroes, the heroes I've met along the way, standing up here in these Capitol steps. We're here today and across the country. Women and men who run shelters and rape crisis centers, fighters and allies who stand up to industry titans to expose the truth, survivors who speak up for them, themselves and empower those suffering in silence, You've changed the nation. You've turned your pain into purpose. And your bravery and spirit are unbreakable. Because of you, and this is not hyperbole, because of you, we're a better nation than we were 30 years ago. By the way, my daughter is a social worker in Philadelphia providing housing for abused women and those coming out of prison. She was going to be here today, but she's ill. She was going to introduce me. I want to thank her and all like her. 
You all are the reason why, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I hear about what a terrible nation. I'm an optimistic about our nation. I've never been more optimistic about our future. I really haven't. You just have, we have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. We're the only nation in the world that's come out of every crisis stronger than we went in. And we're going to continue to fight and end all this scourge that we had to deal with. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.